I'm Jackie Carter and I work with our local management board here in Queen Anne's County and I coordinate their character counts and community mentoring programs as well as their anti-bullying committee. Today I have a guest and we're going to talk again about why mentoring matters here in Queen Anne's County. Numerous studies through the years have shown that quality evidence-based mentoring programs have positive impacts on our youth with their academic achievement, their attendance, their behavior choices, as well as a positive sense of self. Mentors help our young people to increase a more positive sense of their future, even broaden the horizons, and help them to negotiate that educational and career pathway as well. National Mentor recently put out a study that was from the viewpoint of our youth, those who are being mentored, on whether it was effective or not, on the same things that I had just talked about with academic achievement and so forth. And according to the youth, an effective mentoring relationship really did help them tremendously. And a key factor was the length of the relationship being a year or more. Another study I just read recently at the end of 2014 was that our young population under the age of 30 are now becoming more involved in their community and thinking community service is very important. Well, this connects with this National Mentor uh, report as well because they found that 66 percent of the youth who were being mentored, if they had been in a positive, lengthy relationship, 66% of them said they thought that they would like to become a mentor as well. So we're hoping to get those young people as well, certainly. So with that, I would like to introduce you to my guest today, Nicole Benner. Hi, Nicole, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm good. Great. Could you please tell our television audience a little bit about yourself and then about the organization that you're with and what their goals are? Of course. I grew up in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, and I grew up being mentored myself okay. and followed through, went to college for human development and family <laughs> studies, and when I graduated, I came here to the shore. So I started out in Dorchester County serving the lower shore from Dorchester to Wor Worcester, mm -hmm. and last January, around last January, I moved to Kent County, and I'm now, I established a program in Kent County and now we're working on Queen Anne's County. So I'm from Big Brothers Big Sisters of the Greater Chesapeake mm -hmm. and we are working to establish a program here in Queen Anne's. Okay, and can you give us a little background on Big Brothers and Big Sisters? Because in Queen Anne's County, I know people know about them, but we have never, ever, surrounding counties have had a Big Brothers and Big Sisters <laughs> yes. at one time, but Queen Anne's County has never had that organization. No, while we, uh, for a while, we just didn't, you know, we didn't have the funding, right. and we were able to provide some technical assistance mm -hmm. and some trainings to local mentoring organizations, but we weren't able to get here and fully commit to making <clears throat> matches. However, we are a state-based organization. Mm -hmm. Our headquarters are in Baltimore, but we do have an office in Salisbury, and and as of right now, we're serving the whole shore from Kent to Worcester, which is huge. And that right. came about in the past in the past year. We mm -hmm. really got into Kent, Queen Anne's, Caroline. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really excited to be moving and shaking. But we're evidence based. We're ba we are nationally affiliated, mm -hmm. and we're an international organization. So we have lots of experience, lots of evidence based programming, and uh, yeah, rocking and rolling. Okay, very good. Um, what are the goals for a program here and what are the challenges that you're finding? Right now our goals are pretty small. We, we started out our goal this year is to make 10 community-based mentoring matches, which means we'll have 10 mentors meeting with their youth out in the community doing activities they both enjoy um, for at least a year. Uh, and challenges are kind of the challenges we've seen in a lot of counties. Uh, recruiting mentors, as I'm sure you see through Character Counts, mm -hmm. is always always a challenge. And also really gaining, making up relationships in the county and gaining the trust of yes. parents and families mm -hmm. that um, their children will be safe in our program. And we, we do know we have best practices in place to make sure that these kids are safe. Mm -hmm. And. It does seem a little odd to me because a lot of times I would hear people say, do we have mentoring programs here? And at first we didn't, they were very informal. Right. Uh, not following really the 
nuts and bolts of an evidence-based program mm -hmm. and that's why we started our community mentoring program again doing the same thing becoming right. affiliated with national mentor and following just going for the training and just really knowing that we were following everything that a um, reputable yes. um, program is doing not to say that informal mentoring is not good right it does have its <laughs> any benefits any mentoring <laughs> yes, is good. wonderful um, however I think what helps our programs to stand out is that they are monitored. Yes. They, uh, they have to report to a person to let them know what's going on. They know who to turn to if challenges come up right. in their matches. Whereas in an informal, it could be, I'm not sure where to go. I think I'm done. Exactly. <laughs> um, but other times I've known other informal relationships that have lasted for many years. And that would be just out in the community. It can be with your pastor, with your right. minister. It can be with an athletic coach. It can be with a next door neighbor. And they're all good things too. Of so course. There are many yes. different ways to mentor. <laughs> um, the ages of the students that you're looking for. We enroll children between the ages of 6 and 16. Okay. They can stay in the program until they're 18. However, okay. like you mentioned earlier, it's that year that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we only go in and enroll up to 16 to make sure that they will get a whole year mm -hmm. being mentored and not age out before that year is over. Right. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. And what's required of mentors? Mentors obviously have to run through that background check. They have to have references mm -hmm. that we will call and check, and they have to be able to commit to twice a month for at least a year. Mm -hmm. All mentors can do more than that, obviously. <laughs> right. We love it when they do, exactly. but they don't have to. Mm -hmm. um, but <clears throat> they do have to commit for that year. And if they're college students, um, you know, maybe at Washington College or at Chesapeake mm -hmm. College, and they're going to go home during the summer, they have to commit to two years because they're going to lose that oh, time see. while they're mm -hmm. home. I see. Okay. Um, so I can see that. Whereas in our program, we just continue through the summer and whatnot, too. Right. And, but ours is a combination of both in school and out in the community. So mm -hmm. kind of looking at the big brothers and big sisters model, we yes. tried to figure what was going to work best for us in our community. And um, so that's, and plus with me, I'm actually just recruiting and overseeing the mentor so I need right. somebody on the other end so the school system was the perfect yes. thing to say <laughs> okay you will help with them uh, with the the matches um, right. but not only do they um, recommend a match but parents can and other community members mm -hmm. and community agencies which as we built up but it's taken us some years we are getting that from <laughs> developmental disabilities and right. um, from family navigators and mm -hmm. even some psychiatrists so uh, as it takes a while to get the name out there. It does. Which it, it just amazes me since everybody would always, why don't we have a big brothers and big sisters and the ones <laughs> trying to get in here? But again, it, I think it's trying to get that information out to the public. Of course. So that's why I wanted to have you here today so that people can know, hey, here's another program another around that can be used and it may suit them better because I ask my mentors for four hours a month, but they can do it meeting them twice a month right. and make the four. I have two airplane pilots who oh, they're wow. in one week and out another week. So. Okay. But I find that when they meet even just twice a month, they pack more hours into the meetings. Yes. And yes. mine are also allowed. So my mentors are also allowed to um, do texting and emailing to okay. continue the contact when they can't meet together and especially right. during the summer if their um, mentee actually goes away for the summer because um, some of our our young people might go to another family member and stay with of them course. for a month or things like that. And it could be just as close as Kent County. So, <laughs> yes. I mean, the mentor could still meet with them, but it's mm -hmm. still, it could be further. So they're allowed to do those as well. So we, we kind of did a combination of a lot of different types of yeah. uh, mentoring programs out there, which has made it very successful for us, I do believe. Of course. Um, but so right now your model is two kind hours a month and it's completely out in the community. Well, it's two outings a month. Uh, two so outings a month, so it could be more It's than more hours. than two hours, okay. typically. Um, you know, obviously, with mentors' schedules, it, yes. it varies mentor to mentor. Yes. Um, and it also varies by the kids, because, you know, our younger, I'm sure you yes. know, the younger kids, <laughs> our elementary age littles, they're typically, I want to see my mentor once a week. Mm -hmm. Our high school age littles are typically, eh, twice a month is good. Uh, I've got yes. my own friends, yes, and I'll exactly. be okay. So, um, when we match, we take all those things into consideration as well. Right, definitely. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm finding that if a mentee stays 
in the program for years mm -hmm. with their mentor, and I have some that are working on their fourth year together, that if we started them somewhere in elementary school, it's helped them to bridge over into sixth grade. Yes. And then in the middle school, from eighth grade, bridging into high school, even actually, especially, some of our young people are a little more diffident about school and so forth. So uh, some mentors have actually even gone over to the school during the summer and got an interview with the principal so that they could oh. actually speak with the principal and, and the principal gave the child a, a, a nice tour so that they start to feel more comfortable. Oh, that's great. So that's it's wonderful. Uh, so when my mentors ask me, what can I do? I said, anything to help that child. Yep. And so they're all, uh, they all have their different ways of handling things, mm -hmm. but uh, they go way far and above what I've even asked them to do. Yeah, I find, I find that a lot of mine mm -hmm. do the same. <laughs> Which is great. It's wonderful. <laughs> we have some wonderful mentors in all of our counties. Right, and, yes. Uh, especially, and we do find, you know, we do ask for that year mm -hmm. or that two years for college students, which is great for people, you know, like our young professionals who are mm -hmm. in transition and may be right. leaving. Um, but we do find that the longer our match is together, obviously the mm -hmm. more help that child receives. You know, we have obviously not here. Here all of our matches are pretty <laughs> new, but on right. the lower shore, you know, I have matches that have been together for eight years or mm -hmm. nine years. Yes. And they've seen these kids from the time they were six or seven till mm -hmm. they're about to graduate from high school. Which is great. And their relationships are just so inspiring to mm -hmm. all of us because, I mean, for some of them, it's, there, it's still a mentor-mentee relationship. They're yes. still with us, but in a lot of ways, their relationship has grown and developed mm -hmm. to, you know, being friends or, yeah, it's it's just definitely. incredible to see how these relationships develop is, and change definitely. over time. And one of the things that I'm seeing in our programs is that the relationship that's being built with the family members, mm -hmm. whether it's single parent or both parents, or it's an aunt or uncle or, or some other caregiver, uh, they help, help the, the caregiver to understand more why it's important for mentoring and why their child may need some other services that can be provided. Yes, I have a lot of mentors who go and for us, one of our biggest things is we like to tell our mentors, don't overwhelm yourself. Right. You know, you're there to mentor the child. Yes, exactly. Um, and any support they give the family is above and beyond. Exactly. But of course, we find mentors doing mm -hmm. that. And we exactly. find um, mentors actually taking that step and helping their child get into horizons in other mm -hmm. counties or helping mm -hmm. them if they're having a really bad time at one school, trying to figure out if they can switch that school for them. I mean, I have mentors doing things that I would have never Yes. imagined I know. them doing so. <laughs> I've had them take it to the doctors to get their physical so they could be into the sports. <laughs> yeah. I, know. I didn't ask them to do that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but that's, that shows the, the depth of the relationship that has been built For and sure. that they really want to help that child to become as successful as possible. Yes, and it allows those relationships to grow even more because that's when those kids see this person really cares for me. Exactly. And they're not just showing up twice a month because they have to. Right. They're showing up because they want to and they care about what, what's Definitely. happening to me. And I had, I had a, an older woman who was matched with um, um, a middle school child and she was afraid that maybe the age difference would be too. I said, give it a chance and they're yep. just off. <laughs> <laughs> yep. When you I find have some of those a little too. bit of a common interest. Of you course. Know, those types of things. Um, and do you do same gender matching? For the most part, um, our girls are always matched with women. Mm -hmm. However, we find that for our for our boys, while we do everything we can to match right. them with a male, male mentors are so hard to find yes, they are. that if we didn't sometimes match them mm -hmm. with women, they'd never get matched. So right. um, we will find, you know, if it's an active boy, we'll find an an active girl to be mm -hmm. matched with them. We still mm -hmm. match based on personalities and preferences, right, but we right. will sometimes match a young boy with a with a female mentor. Okay, all right. Uh, I know that you need partners. Of so course. what are the partners that you need to get this program up and running here in this county? <laughs> oh my, uh, you know, we always like to start with the schools mm -hmm. and Department of Social Services right. and health departments. Mm -hmm. um, and I have been in all those places and, and talked and while, <clears throat> and with some of them, we have some pretty good partnerships going right. on. With DSS, we uh, are working with Ready by 21 to mm -hmm. help serve foster care right. youth. And um, that's a huge initiative that's yes. just begun. Uh, a, after that, it's 
we can really partner with with just about anyone exactly. individual therapists mm -hmm. um, corporate partners are always huge any um, for example in Kent County you know some of our corporate partners are sending are allowing their uh, employees right. to go into the schools because right. we we have a school based program in Kent County mm -hmm. so they're allowing their employees to leave for lunch and go into the schools mm -hmm. and they're really encour encouraging their employees to get involved either in that right. way or in the community mm -hmm. so corporate partners are, are always huge um, and other nonprofits that serve youth mm -hmm. um, so that we can help serve our families because right. as we case manage these matches of course we're case managing the families too and mm -hmm. to be able to know what we're talking about about Definitely. other organizations mm -hmm. is always huge so really any partners <laughs> we yes. are happy to work with <laughs> this is very true that's why i asked you to be a part of the children's council yes because there's a lot of partners sitting around of that course. table yes um i think some things that may be a stumbling block at time is that our program was here first and they've gotten used to that so yes. like the school counselors <laughs> the board of administration right away when a question comes up they send them right to me right but um, we have talked about, um, oh, I did with Jessica Mims uh, down at the Salisbury office, mm -hmm. uh, met with me, and uh, we did say that if there's possible, that if you couldn't match a, uh, a child or we couldn't, uh, that we would have, you know, yeah. a mentor, you know, come from your organization. Of course. And, and back and forth. So of at course. least that's another type of partnership because we need to work together. <laughs> Yeah. Um, there's lots of children <laughs> out there that need to be mentored and yep. we cannot handle them all exactly. ourselves. Exactly. And, and that's what we do in a lot of counties, especially right. with, with groups that are able to, to put mentors in the school, like mm -hmm. Character Counts is, mm -hmm. you know, some of our mentors lunch or time during the day is the best time for them. Right. So of course we're going to send them your way. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, it's how we get the most kids served. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and just, I want people to be aware that you're here so that mm -hmm. when they're thinking of partnerships, there's another avenue yes. as well, um, as well as when I had interviewed the Hope Academy, Mary Walker, which is the, out of Ken Allen High School, and right. that's basically really, oh, it's looking at their social skills and academics, but it's uh -huh. a, a, a very targeted um, population of um, minorities and, and, and getting through to college or some type of a work career situation. Right. Uh, and it's only like twice a week, stopping in, talking to the kids, knowing that they're on track, those types right. of things. But it's, right. it's another thing that helps them understand oh, yeah. someone cares about them. But they've also have done, found out a lot of them have musical talents. Oh. So they have twice now had two venues for them to share those oh, talents with the public. So okay. even something that's just looking at one aspect of program yeah. can go into another. Of course. Um, and then sometimes it is more specifically looking at, as at the Sudlersville Middle School program that I talked to Eric Daniels about, they were really only looking at um, minorities coming into the school system to spend time with minority children to okay. really s help them see, hey look, I'm a retired teacher. I'm from the military, right. um, I have done this, you can do this too. So there are people who look like you who have become successful yes. and they're just asking them to come in a couple times a year to spend some time with them okay. in the classroom or at lunch or things like that. So mentoring wow. programs can take a lot of so different many. trajectories yes. um, and depending on the level, like our programs are basically, and I know Mary Walker is following because I'm helping her. Again, we're already established. Right. Being part of the local management board, any program um, that we think could use help, we're going to try to help if it's within our ability to do so. Right. Because we would like all mentoring programs to follow those evidence-based practices. Yes. Uh, <laughs> because that's what we're all based on and we know that it, it it is more beneficial to the children in the program. Right. So I do help her in that way. Whereas okay. Eric Daniels, they're just in the school system, so it's just a very cursory background check that they'll probably be doing because they're right. never really left alone with the kids in the classroom. Right. So it's kind of like my character coaches. They're just tier one volunteers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our other programs, they're tier two. You yeah. Know, they have to have all the bells and whistles done. Yes. Um, and that costs money. It costs a lot of money. <laughs> yes, it does. So that's probably one of the biggest stumbling blocks that we, we can have. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was lucky in being part, see, character counts is part of the county government. 
Okay. So then we did go and talk to the commissioners and say, did you think that this would be a good thing? And this came through HR that they really talked okay. to them about. So they do allow us 17 background checks a year, which is that, huge. That is huge. Absolutely yeah. huge because we're working on a shoestring. <laughs> yeah, as so, most, mentoring, most programs mentoring programs are. are. It, you would think it wouldn't be that hard to find money for such you would think. Uh, yeah, and, <laughs> and it is. It is very <laughs> it hard. Really is. Yes. Um, so I think sometimes people may get confused of different types of things out there. So mm -hmm. that's why I like to have, uh, to interview people, to let them know, hey, well, you got this program, this program, this program. So there's a lot of things that you can choose from, and it's what you feel most comfortable doing. Right. Right. Because, yes, mentoring is a very personal type of thing. Yes. And I would say the bulk of my character coaches who just go into the classroom would not become a mentor. Yeah. But my mentors, they wouldn't even think of becoming a character coach. The mentoring right. is what they want to do. Right. That's what, and, and they all say that they want to give back. Yes. They really do. Um, if you are affiliated, if a mentoring program is affiliated somehow with the Big Brothers and Big Sisters, mm -hmm. and like I say, when I started my program, we were registered with National Mentor. Okay. And then we were registered with Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Right. And then we just kind of re-upped that when they started a new resource center. Yes. Um, so from my viewpoint, I know how I've been at it from consultation. Right. And someone actually coming to some of my early board meetings and help guide us the way. How do you set up your handbook? Mm -hmm. What are the things that you're looking for? Giving us materials. Yes. The elements of effective practice and all these wonderful, I think it was five booklets that just uh, very, about this size, size of this. But, yeah. uh, but it just helped us to mm -hmm. really know where we were headed and also to always be able to call up and say, I'm finding this challenge or am I heading in this right direction? Right. So that's always really good. So what are some other things that can come from that? Well, yeah, so Big Brothers, Big Sisters, a couple years ago, they took on the Maryland Mentoring Partnership. Mm -hmm. So we are kind of the resource for the whole state in terms of mentoring. Mm -hmm. So with that comes technical assistance like the person coming to mm -hmm. sit in, like those handbooks. Um, it comes with, we offer trainings to our mm -hmm. mentoring organizations and we have a mentoring 101 training, we have um, child abuse protection mm -hmm. trainings, we have um, bullying trainings, mm -hmm. all of those things. And if there's something that an organization needs, mm -hmm. um, we have the resources that we can put together a training for that mm -hmm. and, and we would be happy to do so. Right. And we also have things like free and reduced cost background checks, mm -hmm. which as we were talking about <laughs> earlier, that is a huge expense yes. and we're able to offer that mm -hmm. down through our partners. So um, we really do have a pretty wide base, especially being affiliated with Mentor, that mm -hmm. we can offer our partners a lot of right. different things. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And when you do, I know when we signed up for National Mentor, it was quite a <laughs> a long impro a process. Yes. There's a lot of things you had to input mm -hmm. in there and then you constantly do it on an annual basis. How are you doing? Where are you touching? Uh, so you know that when they accept you into the program, you're doing the right thing. Yeah, you're so doing it does make right. you feel good. <laughs> yes. It makes you yes. feel very good. Plus then you get a lot of um, emails and resources from them that are sent to you on a of regular course. basis, which yes. is really great. Um, talking about why mentoring is important, <laughs> Uh, from one of these listservs that come out and send me all these different yes. things, uh, there was a nice little um, article on Kevin Spacey, okay. um, a well-known actor who's now in House of Cards on HBO, I do believe it is, uh, but has been around for quite a while. And he was actually mentored by Jack Lemmon, again, another big actor um, who was well-known up to his death. And Jack Lemmon felt that he should help others on their chosen path. Right. So he would have workshops for young people to see drama workshops to say, oh, what part of drama do you think you want to be involved in? Let's talk about this. And Kevin Spacey was 13 at the time when he attended right. one of those, and that started him off on his career. That's and Jack Lemmon still great. mentored him along the way. Okay. And Kevin Spacey was very impacted by Jack's philosophy that if you've been successful in your chosen path, then you need to reach back and help those who are just starting on that path. Right. And I liked what how Jack Lemon expressed it he says you have to send the elevator back down yes so this philosophy how do you think that impacts the mentors in our programs do you think that they're practicing that I think they are I think that you know no matter where my mentors came from mm -hmm. some of them some of them came from backgrounds just like 
our kids. Yes. Um, myself included. I came from a single parent home mm -hmm. and I had a mentor um, who helped me figure things out along the way. And a lot of my mentors went through that too. And then I had mentors who didn't come from that. They came yes. from kind of um, what most of the population views as kind of a cookie cutter uh -huh. um, home life. But they all are either in college or they are established and that's exactly what they're doing. They're sending mm -hmm. that elevator back down. If they're in college, they're bringing yes. their mentees to their college mm -hmm. and, and showing them around campus. If they're in a business, they're talking to their mentees about what they want to do and if mm -hmm. there's anything that they can do to, to help them get there, mm -hmm. be it a workplace visit or finding more information for mm -hmm. them, they're doing that for them. Mm -hmm. So. And I think that also speaks to our matches being based on personalities yes. and preferences. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of people think that in order to be a mentor, they have to be um, a high executive <laughs> right. business person. And that's just not the case. Exactly. Um, some of my best mentors are, you know, watermen or yes. um, construction builders. Mm -hmm. And some of my kids, that's what they want to do. They're good with their hands. They want to be a mechanic. They right. want to do those things. And mm -hmm. that's who I'm going to match them with. Mm -hmm. And they can teach them skills along the way. So... Um, yeah, that's definitely what they're all doing. I think so too. I know when mentors or somebody who is interested in the program will call me up or come to my office, they'll say, what are you looking for? What do I, what type of education do I have to have? I said, are you caring? Do you really want right. to help a young person? Yes, I do. I want you then. Yeah, that's all that we need. <laughs> that's all we need, yes. exactly, because your experiences will help that child of course and then you're going to learn from that child too yep i have one um older lady who was mentoring a younger girl um she actually lived in japan for a little bit and oh, this wow. child is very much into anime oh so this so it just you know so yeah, it's like it i think out. that helped them to really mesh together for sure a lot so yeah. um and and just that a lot of times our young people need to be a little more organized <laughs> And if yes. you have that skill, <laughs> that goes a long way to helping them a tremendously. Yes. yes, a very long way. And um, speaking from that mentor that lived in Japan, uh -huh. another thing that I find with these mentors is that they are able to talk to them about experiences mm -hmm. or even give them experiences that these mentees may have never even dreamed of doing. Exactly. You know, I have, I've had kids that have never been bowling, mm -hmm. let alone to another state or a foreign oh, yes. country. Mm -hmm. So um, my mentors that have those experiences, they're able to open these little eyes to, to a different way of life and, mm -hmm. a, and something to strive for. Exactly. So. Exactly. So that, that's all we're looking for. Yes. <laughs> really, it's pretty <laughs> simple. We're building relationships. Um, well, who do you think needs to get involved? I think we just, we just I think we everyone. just did everyone. <laughs> Anyone yeah. who has, um, they feel as so though this is something that they want to do. Right. And, you know, even if someone is not comfortable mm -hmm. mentoring one-on-one, on, one on one, there are so many other volunteer yes, opportunities mm -hmm. available through us or available, you know, we can refer them out to other organizations exactly. who could use their expertise. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have a volunteer committee. We have mm -hmm. um, people who go out and are advocates for us, and mm -hmm. they either fundraise or they'll help us at information tables or presentations. Right. So if you want to get involved in mentoring <laughs> but you're not quite sure what you're going to do right. with a kid twice a month, um, we can either get you comfortable with that mm -hmm. or we can put you in somewhere else. Definitely, definitely. Um, so to you, mentoring does matter. Of course it and does. And why? I mean, it helped myself, it helped uh, me okay. and it, it helped, helped my brother. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I saw it from the time I was 12, right. how much it could do. And in, in being a mentor now, I've been a mentor to three mentees mm -hmm. as of right now, as well as seeing it from this side and calling my matches every month to check in and mm -hmm. see how things are doing. I mean, I've really seen it from every single angle imaginable right. and it, right. it really is making a difference every single day. It does. And even those who I myself had found some mentors, it was a very informal type of situation, but mm -hmm. they did help me through various stages of my life, even in my professional life as well. Right. Uh, but even if you don't think you were mentored, if you really think back, there was somebody in your life who made a, a, an of impact course. on you, made yes. some difference that perhaps made you think a different way, a little bit different way, or you thought, well, maybe I could do this, right. or set you off on your pathway, whether you realized it or not. Yes, definitely. <laughs> when I look back, I had so many, and I feel like I should call them all up and thank them. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then, I'll sit down and write a note. But right, there you go. Yeah. You know, and I know during National Mentor Month, which is what we're in right now, yes. um, 
uh, I know that uh, Maryland Mentoring uh, Resource, when they were standing by themselves, would send us little cards to say, be sure to thank somebody right. who was a mentor in your life. Yes. And uh, so they send the cards, and I would send them out to people. And somebody, I didn't know I did, you, I did that for you. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. then that makes them feel better about themselves and say, whatever you do, you never know who's watching or who's taking in what you're saying and doing because right. you, you definitely can have a positive impact on a person. Of course. Okay. Uh, I know you're doing the community mentoring part mm -hmm. right now. Are there any other projects that you would like after you get settled here to perhaps move into that are part of the Big Brothers Big Sisters um, oeuvre? Yeah. Uh, my, my personal favorite program is workplace mentoring okay. and I worked on workplace mentoring in Worcester County mm -hmm. and through this program what we do is we take freshmen in high school mm -hmm. and we match them in a work setting okay. um, at some kind of business. It's still one-on-one -on -one, um, mm -hmm. but they go to that business once a month mm -hmm. for pretty much the whole day mm -hmm. and they're learning job skills. They're learning mm -hmm. A lot of kind of what the Hope Academy does. That's those soft, right, those those soft things, skills, yes. getting into college, mm -hmm. interviewing techniques. Mm -hmm. um, and the hope is that these freshmen stay with these mentors all the way through senior year. Oh, okay. And they're really learning these skills for after they graduate. Mm -hmm. um, I got to see our first, it was the Eastern Shore's first cohort. I got to see them graduate, um, I guess it was last year. And they just they went from you know not really caring about school and and mm. all these things to graduating with scholarships to college right. and it was absolutely <laughs> phenomenal to see and I really felt like those are skills that all of our um, high school students need mm -hmm. and it's something that schools don't necessarily have time to teach them because mm -hmm. you know they're kind of um, bombarded with the you know testing things testing the academical and parts all the of things it, that yes. they they have mm -hmm. to do so <laughs> it's something that we can go in and teach we mm -hmm. also have a wonderful program called sister power that mm -hmm. helps us to empower girls transi transitioning into adolescence mm -hmm. um, it helps us to talk about body image self-esteem mm -hmm. all of those things um, bullying and that's been extremely successful in Salisbury. So mm -hmm. those are two programs that I would love to see come here okay. in the near future. In our high schools, we have work-based learning um, teachers mm -hmm. who actually do some of that stuff uh, oh, with trying wonderful. to match them up with a business and the resume skills and interviewing and whatnot. And um, they were greatly aided by our Chamber of Commerce working that with wonderful. that. But again, you only reach so many students. Mm -hmm. So uh, as I said, there's one. there can all be a lot of programs in <laughs> yes. place, but it's only affecting a finite amount of students. And right. how can we reach the other students as well? And sometimes it's through collaborations and just working with one another. Of course. And helping to support one another <laughs> yeah. in our endeavors. Because we're all working for the same thing. Yes. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> Well, Nicole, if somebody is interested, how do they contact you? Can you give them a phone number and an email? I can. They can um, call 410-543-2447 <clears throat> uh, or email N for Nicole, Benner, B-E-N-N-E-R at biglittle.org. They can also go to our website, www.biglittle.org, and put in that they want to volunteer or they want to enroll a child. Type in their zip code. It'll come straight to me, and I'll call them. Okay. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us today? Just that, you know, it is National Mentoring Month. Yes. It's winding down. Um, currently in Queen Anne's County, we have a wait list of volunteers, which is, that never happens. Yes. It never <laughs> happens. So, um, you know, we're enrolling kids and matching them very quickly. But the truth of the matter <clears> is that as I get more established here, that's going to flip. And I'm yes. going to have a waiting list of kids. So if you're watching today, <laughs> you know, tell three people that you think would make good mentors. Say, hey, I think you'd be really good at this because coming from you is going to come a lot better than coming from definitely. me. And that's what's going to get people to sign up. That's right. Very definitely. Well, thank you so very much for joining us today. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Uh, no problem. Well, as you can see, we do think mentoring matters here in Queen Anne's County because we do have several different programs out there. Uh, that someone who is interested in could become a part of and they are always looking for volunteers. You will have Nicole's information uh, at the end of this program but then again you can also call me at 410-758-6677 or jcarter at qac.org if you wanted to know about 
other programs that I'm aware of or even the community mentoring program because we're all working together with the same youth who are actually looking for someone to care about them, just another person. And that's part of the developmental assets um, way of thinking that within the family, you need those caring individuals, but every child needs at least three people outside in the community who doesn't have to even think about them if they don't want to, that they care about them. And this goes a long way in making a huge impact on our youth. So if you think you're one of those people, and we think you are too, please contact us and have a great day.